All right, so now let's get the rings checked. And basically, you're gonna wanna grab one of the rings. Now, they're marked. Every manufacturer marks them different, so consult your manufacturer. However, these rings are marked first, which means that's the this is the compression ring at the top of the piston. And then see top, that means that this end goes up, okay? So you wanna check your ring gap, and you're gonna to wanna to repeat this for all the rings. So you're gonna have your top ring, your second ring, and then you're gonna have your two oil rings and your corrugated ring, which I've already done these and I've put them in the piston. So basically all you wanna do is stick it down here in your cylinder. Okay, take your piston, level it out, okay. Then taking your feeler gauge, you're gonna wanna check the ring gap, which is right there. Now on the 800, the top ring is 0 0.012 of an inch. So 12 thousandths of an inch. And she's good. Goes right in perfect. So that ring is checked and good. So now we're going to pull it out. That's and now you're just going to repeat the process for your second ring and your two oil rings. Now your second ring gap is 0 0.015 and your oil rings will be 0 0.010. So again, just repeat this same process for these rings and then go to your second piston and your second cylinder and repeat the same process again and here's our specs for our ring gaps now if your ring gaps are too tight just use a file and file them down a little bit just keep filing them until your ring gaps are within specs and there we have it we've got our piston all our rings which have been checked made sure all the gaps are good which they are and I've got them laid out in order that they go onto the piston. And then this here, this is the basically the orientation, okay? So this is the exhaust marking on your piston. And your gap for your oil expander is going to be right here. Your first oil ring, doesn't matter, they can be on either side. But you're going to put one oil ring about 30 degrees over. You're going to put the other oil ring about another 30 degrees over and then you're going to put your second compression ring on which goes on the intake side the gap's going to be here and then you're going to put your top compression ring on which is going to be on the exhaust side on right here so i'll show you so pretty much take your piston there's exhaust so we're going to hold it like this and take your oil compression your oil ring and just very carefully slide it around and this little the little gap make sure that these the end of the oil rings butt up see right there how they they butt up together don't you don't want them overlapping they just gotta just butt up together like that okay so there's that one we're gonna take one of your oil rings and what I do is I kind of start it where I want it which is going to be over here about 30 degrees over now some of the pistons have locating pins but like the Polaris ones will have locating pins for all these so you really can't mess it up but and all I do is just walk it around nice and careful okay just like that all right and then you want to double check, make sure you're still buttoned up on that one. You're going to take your next oil ring. Same thing. We're going to start it where we want it, which is right around here, about 30 degrees over. Start it in and just walk it around. Nice and careful. Oop, got stuck in that groove. There we go. So there's our oil rings done. Now you can, you want to check. There's our gap there. There's our gap there, which I want to move it over. You can just kind of grab it and 
push the one ring over a bit. Okay. And then our top gap is right there. So same thing. I'm going to rotate this one over a little more. And there we go. Okay. Now you're going to grab your next ring, which is your second or the, the middle ring. <clears throat> and check it. They're marked. They're going to have markings and they'll also tell you. Just refer to your whatever piston and rings you get. Usually the instructions help you. So this one is going to go at the top, second compression ring. So same thing, we're going to put it in about where it starts. So up here at the top. And just be careful. These ones are a little tighter. And you just want to walk it around. And I'm just using my fingers to walk it onto the piston. There we go. There we go. And then, last but not least, take your top one. Again, top first. And this one's going to go towards the exhaust. So I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to put it in and just, again, walk it around the piston, just like that. And there we go. Rings are in. And now just repeat the process for your second piston. You're going to want to get one of your sir clips started. So what I do is the little indent in the piston here, start the clip there, okay? And you're gonna hold it like this with your thumb. This is the tricky part, and you gotta be careful because these things will go flying or you'll stab yourself. And basically, as you push with the screwdriver on the end, keep pushing down the clip with your thumb. And you just slowly do it and you'll work it right in there. And I might get myself here, so. These are a pain. There it goes, it's in. So I always do one out of the machine. This way I can put it in, put the wrist pin in, and then do the other one. So there you go. All right, so we got our pistons done. We've got our new cylinder jug. Like I showed you all, put the circ clip in. I get the wrist pin started with some assembly lube on it. Okay. And basically all I do, so this is pointing towards the exhaust so the exhaust side is going to be this side with the cutouts for the, the lifters okay so I put the pins in here's our exhaust mark so this one is going to be for this cylinder there's our exhaust mark this one's going to be for this cylinder so I've got it all laid out nice nice now the bottom of the piston or the bottom of the jug here is got a bevel and that's going to help you guide your rings in so i'm just going to double check my ring gaps here make sure that they're all where they're supposed to be okay and then basically you just set your piston down in and all i do is i just push my rings in with my fingers we go and they just walk right down in so there's that one same thing here we're going to check our gaps make sure all our gaps look good we'll set this down in push our rings in and just walk her down nice and slow there you go so you get all your rings some oil rings here we got to push down a bit and there we go they're in now we take this over to the engine and put it on the motor all right so now we're back over here to the engine now basically we've got our two rods here i've already installed the new lifters which they just slide in put a little assembly lube on them slide your lifters in you're gonna to wanna to make sure you got a dowel here and a dowel here. 
Those are your centering dowels. Take your base gasket. It only goes on one way. These outside holes, two are going to be larger than the other two. The two larger ones go over the dowels. So if you put it on upside down, you can't. They won't slide over the dowels. So there's that. Okay. But real easy. Now you just take the cylinder with the pistons in it and slide them onto your connecting rods. Just kind of feed your rods into the pistons and then push your wrist pins in. Now you may have to wiggle it around a bit and do some moving around. There's that one. Don't want to pull your piston out. You don't want to force, there it goes, see? Just a little movement. Okay, now you can just leave this like this for right now. Let it sit on top of your hose. Because now you got to put the sir clips on each side of the, of the wrist pins. The one here and the one here. Now what I do, take an old rag, fill up the engine hole with the rag, and then just like before, using a screwdriver and your thumb, push those sir clips in. I'm gonna do it off camera because it's a pain in the butt and I don't wanna screw it up. So be right back after I get those wrist pin C clips in. All right, I got those pesky wrist pin clips in. Now you just simply take your jug and just wiggle it down. Sometimes it helps if the crank starts to turn. There we go. Jug's on. Okay, so now everything's pretty much ready to go. I got the old dowel pins out of the old cylinder. So I put those in. Uh, using the clutch, I brought the pistons up the top dead center. And take your, put your head gasket on. Okay. And then grab your cylinder head. Put your cylinder head on. Just like that. All right. There's one. Two. All right, so now using your 14 millimeter 12 point your driver, you're just gonna drive these down. You're not gonna torque it down or tighten it down. We're just gonna use it to, oop, a little too tight. There we go. Just use it to get them down. Okay, now that we got those guys down, now we're gonna torque the cylinder head down. And basically, Polaris says 60 to 64 foot-pounds. I go right in the middle, split the difference, 62. And all I do is I just start in the middle and work my way around. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and it's gonna... And there we have it. They're all torqued to 62 foot-pounds. Again, just do it in a few stages. Work your way up to the 62 foot-pounds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just keep going back and forth. Usually I go uh, take it up to 25, then I'll go up to 45, and then I'll go up to 62. And that gives you nice even pressure across the board. All right. So now we can put our push rods back in. We'll simply stick them down through. You feel them hit the lifters. Make sure they sit in the little buckets. There we go. 
and then reinstall our rockers. Back in order as I had them sitting on the cardboard. Just like that. And again, using your driver, just set them down. Now using your torque wrench, Polaris says between 20 and 24 foot pounds. Well, we're gonna split the difference, 22. Just tighten these guys down to 22 foot pounds. There we go. There we go. Rockers and push rods are back in. Now we're gonna put our the valve cover on. So when you put in your new gasket in, it's gonna have this little locating piece and it's gonna be flat. So that locating piece goes right here. So you just put it in there and start walking it around. Just like so. Bada boom, bada bing, done. And now you're just gonna put your valve cover bolts in and torque them down to 100 inch pounds. Working your way around in a crisscross pattern. And there we have it. Our motor is all put back together. All right. So this will take care of this part of the series. I hope you all enjoyed it and got some good points and tricks and ideas how to get your motor all back together. So stick around for part four. We're going to be putting the intake system back on. Got some improvements with that. The new exhaust system and hopefully getting this bad boy going. So again, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, do what you can. Let's get this channel built up and I'll catch you all around on the next one.